God is so good. Amen. You're here this morning. It's a new day. It's a new time. Praise God. And as Pastor Angel comes rushing in and, and ready to open up, let's give the Lord a hand for this man of God. That, you know, I, we had lunch the other day, and I just enjoy myself with this. Pastor Eric went to go have breakfast, and his wife had come with him. You know, we we're getting to know each other. And uh, so I left some ham. I left a ham and a, and a sausage on the on the plate, you know. And I said, that's a lot of pork I'm eating, you know. So he just says, uh, we're talking, and he just grabs and grabs. He reaches over and grabs my ham. Because, you know, we got to know each other. <laughs> and he puts the sausage. And his wife is like, what are you doing? That's his food. I go, it's okay. I <laughs> I go, they're going to throw it away. I go, I'm not going to take it home. I go, let them have it. Let them eat it. Right? Amen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Didn't make it there. But, <laughs> but that's, how, that's how we met, man. Good, good to have you guys here at uh, uh, men, uh, Arise Men of God. <laughs> Arise Men of God. Amen. <laughs> Talking about resilient, you know, being resilient. Uh, fall down and get up. Even in your tough times, in your low light times, get up no matter what, man. Dust yourself off and get up. Some of you guys, have you guys ever been in a fight? Any of you guys been ever been in a fight? You've been punched and knocked down? Yeah, I have, and you have to get up. You have to get up or he's going to pound you. Especially when you fight those guys on the street. They're, they're merciless, man. They, <laughs> they want to win, man. But, you know, we, ha we have a God that fights on our side. He's with it. He's not against us. Amen. And he'll teach us how to be resilient no matter what goes on in our life. And sometimes there's a season that we are going to have a, a, a season of surviving. But I, but I don't want men to survive. I want men to thrive. Because we have the spirit of God living in us. God didn't survive. He thrived through everything. And that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in us and gives life to our mortal bodies. Amen. And it's our turn now to stand up. If you're dirty, dirt, you just dust yourself off. We coached a kid way back in San Jose, they, remember? And he was a, he was a, 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 a short, short stop. Thank you. Short stop. And uh, I said, kid, you're not even dirty. I said, we're in the fourth inning. And he says, oh, no, I can't, I can't get dirty. I go, why? My mom won't let me get dirty. She says, I can't dirty my uniform. I grabbed dirt and threw it all on. I said, you're going to dirty now. I don't care. <laughs> said, you got... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Said, We're ball players. You're going to get dirty. You're going to get sweaty. You're going to smell, man. And, and, and that's what happens to us spiritually, too. We got to get dirty. You got to get in, it, in, in the game, you know. Uh, a bench warmer never gets tackled. Never gets tackled. It's the person that's in the game that gets tackled, gets dirty, and all that stuff. You guys are in it. You're in it to win it in Jesus' name. Amen? You're in it to win it. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I think we're on live streaming. I'm over here like, uh, but we're not live streaming, huh? Okay. Amen. Uh, uh, hallelujah. So uh, we have a good, uh, good uh, lineup today. Pastor Tommy's going to be speaking. Come on now. Amen. So I just pray that you guys open your ears, open your hearts to hear what God has to say. Let God minister to you. You got to open your hearts. Say, Father, I need to hear from you. I need an answer for my prayers. You know what I've been going through? You know what I've been thinking? Because he knows our thoughts. But I need a word. You receive not because you ask not. So just ask him right here while we're, we're over here. Just, you know my heart, Lord. Only you knows our hearts. We, you know, you can tell people, you know, God knows my heart. He really does know your heart. The wickedness of it, the, the love of it, the forgiveness of it, and the bitterness of it. He knows it all. So that's why when you say God knows my heart, he knows who you are. 
He made you. So, but it's time. Today's time now. We've been at this too long now. Too long. It's time to thrive, guys. It's time to overcome in Jesus' name. It's that time. You got to make a, a decision yourself. I can't make it. Your wife can't make it for you guys. Your wives can't make it for you. Let me say it one more time. Your wives cannot make it for you. You have to make the decision, right, Jess? That's right. You got to make that decision yourself. So uh, it's been a great time. I've been in church since Wednesday. Wednesday, we went to a Bible study. Thursday was ours. Friday last night, today, and then tomorrow. Five days, man. Imagine when you guys say that. I was in church for five days because we used to be at a party for five days. <laughs> right? We would be in a stupor for five days. We would be drunk for five days. Right? We would be missing in action for five days. I know I would be with my brother. We're going hey, to go get some beer. We ain't coming back. <laughs> you ever did that, Tommy? <laughs> we were gone for three, four days. <laughs> And thank God we didn't have cell phones back then. Because <laughs> they would have been blowing you up. Boy. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're here, guys. So draw close to God, and he's going to draw close to you. Give him your heart, he's going to open your heart. Let him open you up. Let him examine you through the word of God. When you hear it today, you're going to hear the spirit of God speak. He's anointed for such a time as this. So let, let him use Tommy's voice to minister to every one of you. You all have a need. If you tell me you don't need prayer, then you must be a dead Christian. Because we all need prayer. And we all need the word, every one of us. Amen. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for this day. We thank you for our lives and our salvation. I thank you for every man that is here, Lord. I call them man. For these are men. These aren't boys. These are men, Father, that thirst and hunger after you, after the righteousness that you represent in their lives, Lord. You are their righteousness, Lord. You are the wisdom. You are their understanding. You are their just, justice, Lord God. I thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. As we go before you, Lord, whatever sin, Father, whatever weight, Father, that would easily be set us, Lord God, we cast it to the side right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That we would be free. We cast down every foolish thought, every foolish word that has been spoken throughout the week. Or even today, Lord God, we release that in Jesus' name. We want you, Father. We want you, Lord, more than anything else. We want to know you, Lord God. So I pray, Father, for divine protection for those that are on their way, Lord. That you watch over their vehicles, Lord, and bring them a, a safe place to worship. I thank you for these men that sacrificed their Sunday as living sacrifices unto you, Father. To bless them and honor them, Lord. Bless Pastor Tommy, Lord, with wisdom. Make his tongue like a ready pen writer, Father, to speak forth the oracles and the precepts of your word. Use them in a mighty way, Father, but yet in a graceful way. Use them in all truth, Lord God, for your word is truth and your word is life. And as he speaks forth, Father, the impartation of the revelation of the, of the destination that we're to have, Lord God, will be given to us. Let us understand. We want to understand, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you, Father, for the worship team, Lord, for the media team, Lord God, for everyone here, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Eric, the heart that he has for men, Lord. Thank you, Father. And thank you for every pastor, for every leader, for every man that is here, that we would all grow, Lord. We would all grow as brothers, Lord different tribes, Father, but the same kingdom, the kingdom of God. So we thank you, we bless you, we love you in Jesus' name. And all his handsome men said, amen. Hallelujah. All right, worship team. Come on. Turn, turn this off real quick. You got to unplug your right? no? Be free in this place.
your glory. Just say yes, that's all you have to do. 
say yes and walk and follow. And he's going to use you in a powerful way. He's got, um, he's got someone, too, in your life that's going to um, gonna be a guide and a lead to you and to help you. Amen. Let's just continue to worship.
with us. The Lord says, I am with you. I'm the God of angel armies. I'm the God of angel armies. I'm the God of angel armies. I go before you.
Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. You are the great I am. Greater than any foe, greater than any enemy, greater than any challenge, greater than anything on this earth. He is the great I am. Amen. Well, we bless his holy name today. I love to just exalt the Lord and, and sing about him and, and give him the glory that he deserves. Amen. And as I think about this room and this is the kingdom, you know, I got some men here from my church, my pastor's here. We got up the hill, Tommy, his, his church, and Turning Point. This is the kingdom right here. Isn't it awesome that we are coming together as men and just as brothers in the Lord, all for one purpose? He's uniting his church, amen, and his army, and, his, and he's building his kingdom. Yesterday they proclaimed there's none like you. And today we proclaim there is none like you forevermore with all the saints we'll proclaim there is none like you.
yesterday Yesterday the time like a voice in the wilderness say prepare you the way of the Lord and now's the time to call on Jehovah and to say where is the God of Abraham you are that same God yesterday that was with Moses and went and parted the seas you're the same God that tore down the prison walls with Paul and Silas. You're the same, he's that same God now that tore down the walls of Jericho with Joshua. Has he changed? Is he still that same God? So this song is just saying, you're still that same God that we read about. The Bible's not just stories. The Bible's now. It's now. It's now. It's now. He's still that same God. And I don't know about you, but I'm calling upon that same God for now. Amen? For our city, for our nation right now, for our families, for our children, for the lost in our cities, for the harvest that needs to come in. I'm calling upon him. I'm calling upon that name. He's building his kingdom right now. Amen? So we need to... We need to lock arms right now. We just need to lock arms. We need to come together as he's building his kingdom. You know, it's so cool. My pastor Damon, he's not a, he's not a singer or musician, but he plays drums. But the Lord's been giving him songs like words. And he'll come to me and he goes, I, I just got all these words. I don't know how it would go or anything. And he, he gave me some words about building your kingdom. And and this song just came from the Lord. I just started right coming down and we got together. And it's about building his kingdom. Because that's our desire. That's our, our passion. That's his passion. Yeah. Is that we would we would build God's kingdom in this hour. Amen. I mean, um, he was a Marine, he was a soldier, and he, 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 he just has that in his spirit. So let's sing this together with locked arms, okay? Yesterday, today. Yesterday, they proclaimed.
Establishing your kingdom even now. Even walls of Jericho are coming down. Boys, we release that holy, holy sound. We sing Holy, 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 holy one of Israel.
you don't, this song is, and everyone knows, you, you should know what's happening with Israel. And as he was singing this song, I was thinking about the song just before that, that Josh wrote, and how God delivered everyone. And as you, he was singing this song, I was thinking, the enemy is surrounding Israel right now. And they think because of numbers, they have Israel. But they don't know how big the hand of God is. God's hand will move them. And, and I like the song before this, the one that you wrote, because it tells us all the things that God did before to deliver his people. And as part of the lyrics is that if he did it then, he's going to do it now. Amen. He's going to have victory now. And so when we're going to receive an offering right now, so if you can go to your seats, but I want you to sing. Praise God. God is so faithful. Praise God. Don't get all quiet on me, okay? Come on. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Woo. I know there was a shift. But we need to pray for Israel continuously. And know that God's hand is upon Israel. Praise God. So what I want you to do is that uh, we're going to receive an offering, Pastor Angel's going to come up and receive the offering for us. I asked him if he would do that for us, for a rise men of God. And so if you want to write your $1,000 checks, that's okay, you know, that's fine. There's going to be a QR code, I don't even know if it's working, you may have to get close just to key it in. But if you need an offer, oh wait, Pastor Angel's. He's writing this $1,000 check, praise God. We're not going to just serve him right now, praise God. So I'm going to just, you know, right now, rise men of God, we have three more conferences coming up. At the end of the month, we're going to be in Visalia. And in September, we'll be in, in Sanger near Fresno. And then in October, we'll be in Arizona. So the seed that you sow today is going for those that's in our Vesalia, the, the men that's going to receive, because we don't charge. You know, I've seen places now, it seems like it's a new thing to charge, but I'm old school and I believe God will meet our needs. Do we always meet the budget? No, it doesn't matter to me, but we're still here. We're still moving, right? Amen. And let me just share this last thing before I uh, have you raise your hands, but we have, the ministry has sown into ministries. There was someone that their electricity was going off, and I knew them, so we paid their bill, because I know them. They're integrous. Someone who didn't have a job for a while, and, and they needed some money, a rise man of God said, a part of my church, because I believe in sowing. So the money and the offerings that you bring today, is, I don't take anything. Trust me, I don't take any of them. My team knows that. I don't... They come first. Our, our, our um, ministers come first. I don't take anything. I just trust God. So as you give this morning, give with a two of heart, knowing that the seed you're sowing is on good ground. Praise God. So if you need an offering envelope, raise up your hand. And then just come on up.
so we can be your sons and daughters. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're the God of angel armies. Your arm will never fail. You're the God of Jehu, you destroy all worship of hell. You're the God who has all power over heaven, earth, and hell. You're, You're a mighty God. Right after him, Pastor Tommy will come up and deliver the word. And the crowd went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's my proclamation. My, that's what I proclaimed, Pastor Damien and Tommy, when they said, "And we have pastor here today." And I go, "And the crowd goes crazy." They don't go crazy, but <laughs> they're gonna get it one day. They say, "Yeah, amen." We used to get all crazy for the Raiders and the Rams and the Cowboys. Hey, Amen. We should get crazy for uh, the men of God, no matter what man it is. Hey, Amen. We should, we should celebrate the men of God, the leaders of the house. Hey, Amen. We should be celebrating them. Hey, Amen. We celebrate Kobe and, you know, the, what's the Japanese player for the Dodgers? Yeah, exactly, him. You know? <laughs> We celebrate all those guys, man. We got to celebrate the men of God They're around us with one another. Amen. Our, 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 our slogan here is, right, we don't tolerate people. We celebrate people. That's what we got to do. We got to learn to celebrate people. Amen. Uh, if we would put up our uh, thing for the men's conference, please, Neil. Thank you, Alex. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. My apologies. <laughs> Our men's conference is coming up to advance right here in uh, November for the 15th and 17th. It's open, guys. It's open. Uh, we usually take about, I say, 100 guys we take. So uh, they only allow us like 88, but, eh, you know, yeah, amen. We, we take about 100 guys. So, uh, 
You guys are all more than welcome to come. Your men are come to come. You know, it's, it's uh, uh, $200. You Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, get all your meals, you know, get uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then uh, you'll hear different men speaking, different pastors will be speaking. It just, it's not going to be just turning point. You know, we, we have different pastors coming from different churches coming to give a word. We're going to be speaking about engaging, engaging with God and allowing God to engage you uh, in his ways. Amen? Amen. So uh, if you need any, uh, any information, you can see Andy. Raise your hand right there. Amen. You can see Fred. Where's Fred at? Fred right there. Amen. These are uh, men that help us out right here in the leadership. So if you guys want to sign up, you can put a $50 uh, deposit down, hold a spot, and uh, we'll hold that spot for you until you come up with the 200 bucks. It's a great time, right, Alfred? Alfred's part of it. He's from another church, but he's part of it right there. And uh, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful time. So I just want to share that with you guys, put a little plug in for our, our men of a standard, men of a higher standard we're called. Amen. Uh, do we have anything else? That's it, right, huh? And the, us men of a higher standard, we meet every first Saturday. There we are. We, we meet every first Saturday uh, of the month, and we have potluck, and we share the word, and we worship. We love the God just like you did here, you seen today. That's what we do. That's the lifestyle we live. It's a lifestyle of a Christian, a, a man who loves the Lord and worships the Lord. Amen? So that's what it's about. And it's just iron sharpening iron. That's what we're doing, you know, learning to uh, feed each other, learning to sharpen one another, learning to polish one another. Amen? So uh, I'll invite you guys sometime to come in here and speak. You guys will drive over here on a Saturday, right? Amen? Right on, right on. You too, Damien? You're not too far, right? Corona's not far, right? It's what about, that's where you live at, Bert, right? They're about 25, 25 minutes, 20 minutes. Amen? What, what is Eric saying? Throwing... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I, I want to just share this quick little word with you. Proverbs 24, 16. Proverbs 24, 16. And, you know, the, it's about res, resilient, you know, a man of resilient. And uh, we're to be resilient men. Let me tell you what the, what the word resilience means. The, capa the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. That's what, we, that's what we are. We're men. And I was saying earlier, you got to learn how to fall down and get back up. Don't stay down. Get up. Build your, uh, build your continents up. Build your spirit up, your mind and your mind up. When uh, David was defeated, when he got back from a, a, a war, when he came back, they had stolen all the children, they had stolen all the women. When he came back and all his people were mad at him, he could have he stood down, but he didn't. The Bible says he stirred himself up in the Lord. And that's what we have to learn how to do is stir ourselves up in the word, in the Lord, in the spirit, by the spirit of God. Men, real quick here in Jesus' name, because you'll get me to preaching. So here it says in uh, Proverbs 24, for a righteous man may fall seven times, but rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. When the, when the wicked fall, they stay down. But a righteous man doesn't. We got to get up. And I've given you guys uh, instruction many times. Take an eight count. A boxer, when he gets knocked down, when he gets hit with a, a good uh, a kidney shot or hit to the, to the jaw and he's kind of jarred, Take an eight count. He just takes an eight count, right? And he just waits for the eight count, then he gets up. And he's, you know, he's up, and he have to grab on for a little bit, you know. And then he gets to the next round. Then the next round, all right, let's do this one more time. And that's what we have to learn as men. Sometimes you've got to take an eight count. You've got to fall on your knees. When you're feeling defeated, when you're feeling weak, when you, feel, you took a blow, the enemy gave you a good blow, or even yourself from disobedience. Amen. And your disobedience will make you fall into something, you know. But God's there always. And you just take that eight count and rise up again in Jesus' name. And that's what we have to learn to do. Many of you guys have fallen, right? We've all fallen one time or another, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You know, we take some steps back, check everything out, then we come back forward. I'm coming back. This ain't the end. Amen. Failure is never final. Never. Never. 
It's just a step for stepping out real quick. I'm just going to say these three little things, four little things here. It's been said for many years. I was taught this many years ago. Many years ago, I played sports all my life since I was six years old all the way till I was like 21. Tough times don't last, but tough men do, right? And you got to be that tough man. You know, we got to show our wives. We got to show our children that no matter what, we take a licking, but we keep on ticking, baby. We're going to keep going. I'm still going to raise my hands, man, with my heart broken and death and, you know, having no job. or nothing. I'm still going to raise my hand, right? Amen. As men, we must learn to be flexible in situations and circumstances, overcoming by faith, trusting God, and putting our confidence in God. You got to learn to be like a, a, palm, a, a palm tree, like a palm tree, those big tall ones that are 40, 60 feet high. The wind's blowing and they, but they don't fall over because their roots are grounded. And that's what we have to learn to do. Get rooted in the word of God for when the wind blows and things come against you, adversity comes against you, you're rooted. It's not knocking me down. Amen. This is how we have to be as men of God. You have to be resilient. That's the word today, right? We have to be resilient. The true meaning of resilience is that uh, you are able to respond to challenges you face in a way that not just helps you survive uh, through the adversities, but thrive and helps you to bounce back. I was saying that earlier in the room there in the chapel, that we have to learn not just to survive sometimes. Sometimes there's a season that you use for surviving. But there's a time that you have to thrive. There's a time you have to stir yourselves up and say, you know what, enough with this petty penny, you know, this little uh, feeling sorry for yourself, little petty uh, party. Enough with that stuff now. You're, you're a soldier, you know that, right, brother? You were in those rules, in those holes, right? <laughs> like, I'm not going to die. <laughs> I'm going to live. I'm going to go see my mom. I'm going to go back home, right? Amen? And this is how we have to be as, as uh, soldiers in, in the army of God. We got to keep going. We got to get out. I got to get out of this funk. I got to get out of this valley. I got to climb out of this in Jesus' name. There's, I, I may not understand how to do it, but I'm going to ask God for his wisdom. And he's going to give me help. He's our very help, right, in the time of trouble, right? He is. Last one. We, uh, we, as, mis- we as men must learn to thrive. Not, not just to survive. We, we can be... Life can be tough at times, but we must learn to last. A tough man is going to last, and they're going to see you. Some of them don't even know what you're going through. There's brothers that I know right here are going through some hard times in their life, but you wouldn't know it because they're worshiping God and they're praising God. They're in their word every day. They're praying every day. They're not giving up to the, the fight, brother. They're living by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Uh, two, we had two deaths in our family last, last year. My father and my little brother uh, went to be with the Lord. And people came and told me because me and my brothers were right here all worshiping God with tears in our face. And people were like, how do you do that, man? You know, they just buried your brother. They just buried your dad. How can you worship God? Because our trust is in God. I know I'm going to see them again. Amen? It's, I'll see you later. It ain't goodbye. I'll see you later because we're going to see each other. That's the promise of God. I'm expecting that when I, when I go from this life to the everlasting life. I'm going to see him. The first one I want to see is Jesus. I want to see how he looks. Amen. <laughs> face to face. Amen. So I just want to thank you guys for the time. We want to go ahead and just bring Pastor Tommy in up. Amen. Let's give him a good round of applause. In Jesus' name. Come on, my brother. I know he has a good word. He's excited. (laughs) Praise God. You guys can be seated. Amen. Wow. How many know that God is a good God? Amen. Okay. Thank you, guys. God is a good God. I have to say it again. God is a good God. You know, when all hell breaks out, God is a good God. Amen. 
When it's good, God is a good God anyway. Amen. When you're in the valley, God is a good God. I just thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I, I just want to thank the Lord. Thank you, uh, Pastor Angel, pa uh, Pastor Eric, just for this opportunity to minister the word of the Lord. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take it lightly. I, I just, uh, I, I'm just great, really, really grateful for what God has done in my life and has kept me all these years. Uh, I was a young man when I got saved. I was like 23 years old. I got saved uh, March 21st, 1979. And what I've seen from that time to where we're at today is some of you guys weren't even born then. You know what I'm saying? How the church has changed. I've seen a lot of change in the church. And I, I, I remember coming to the Lord when I first got saved and, and I was uh, – I was sitting in the sanctuary, and, you know, I'm just a babe in the Lord. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know about visions. I don't know about dreams. I don't know about none of that stuff. I just know that I gave my life to Jesus. You know, I was strung out with cocaine. I couldn't get out the bed. You know what I mean? Just the devil just had me like a, like a puppet on a string. So when I, when I came to the Lord, I, I came up to an altar. Came, it was a little church. came up to the altar, and I just said, God, if you're so for real like, like these crazy Christians say you are, then take this monkey off my back, and I'll serve you. You know, at that particular time in my life, I had just gotten out of playing in nightclubs. I was up in Fairbanks, Alaska, and it was in the 70s when the Colombians were bringing in the cocaine. And so we were playing six hours a night, six nights a week, had one day off. And the very first set, I remember I, I would play the drums, and then I would come and I would sing. And there was, there was this, this black girl. She was like 6'4". She, like, she looked like Magilla Gorilla. She was she a big woman, man. And so I've, I've got the microphone, and so she's, you know, the stage is up high, and she's going like this to me, and I bend over. I go, what's up? She goes, you want to get high? And I'm like, yeah, what you got? So she pulled out a, a, a vial of cocaine and started packing my nose with the coke. That was the first hour, the first set, and I was there for three months straight. And I did cocaine every single day for three months. I had another guy come to my day off, says, hey, Tommy, what are you doing? I go, no, I'm just getting up, man. He goes, you want to get high? I go, what you got? He throws me a four-finger lid of cocaine. You imagine the street value. I wasn't paying for none of this stuff. And the devil's just feeding me, feeding me, feeding me. Got a hook in my nose. When I, when I left Fairbanks, Alaska, after three months of this stuff, I was so strung out, I couldn't even get out the bed. I ended up getting Monica pregnant. We dated for like five years. We've been married 46 years. You know, God is, God is good. They said it would never last. It would never happen. You know what I mean? But God, God is good. So God, God delivered me from, from that drug addiction. I was very violent. I was just, you know, I, I did things that, that today it feels like it never happened. But I did stuff that was really off the wall. You know what I mean? Hearing voices just from, from snorting coke, you know. And I had to have a vial of cocaine in my pocket just to get up, put the, put the coke up my nose, to get to the bathroom, put it up my nose, get in the car, put it up my nose, get to work, put it up my nose. And it was just a, a vicious cycle. When I came to the Lord in 79, I asked God, I said, Lord, I give you my life. I give it to you. If you are who, you say, who they say you are, then take this monkey off my back and I'll serve you the rest of my life. And I realized that that day, March 21st, 1979, what, it, what had happened is when I gave him my life, I gave him my life. I didn't take it back. I gave it to him. And I realized as time went by that a man is only as good as his word. God stands behind his own word to perform it in our lives. And I realized that God is who he says he is. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a refuge. He's a, my hiding place. He's the very air that I breathe. You know, he's everything. He is, he's the alpha. He's the omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, the one which was and is to come, God Almighty. And I'm, I'm at a place in my life right now that I cannot do life without him. You know, so as Pastor Eric asked me to, if I would want to speak, the conference, I was like, yeah, sure, bro, you know what I mean, whatever you want, I'm, I'm here to serve God. This is, this is my life. This is what I do. I serve him. I live for him. I, I talk with him. I commune with him. And, and, and I've realized that, that 
where my life is at today that God has called me to equip the church and to really bring, bring nuggets to the body of Christ so that they can get these nuggets of truth and put it on their belt and remember these things and be disciplined to do these things every single day. You know what I mean? If you're not reading the word, you need to get in the word. If you're not praying, you need to pray. If you're not faithful to church, you need to get faithful to church. These are the three things that I've learned in these last 40-some years that has kept me strong in the power of his might. It's that I have de developed a prayer life. You know, not five minutes, man. God says, could you not pray for one hour? Amen? And so when people come, you know, now, now I'm in this pastor role, you know, something that I never wanted to do. But God called me to this. I didn't ask for it, man. I didn't, go, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I was a dope fiend, man. I strung out on cocaine. Had no direction in my life. And I, you know what I mean? Barely graduated. I had to go to summer school after I, 12th grade to get my diploma. You know what I mean? I, I, you, you, you give me your phone number really quick. I'll write two numbers backwards. I'm dyslexic. I don't know how to read music. Everything that I do is from God. The Lord has has put his anointing on my life. And I give the Lord the honor, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. And I'm very careful because he was slain to receive it all. Jesus was slain to receive it all. And sometimes we want to take part of that glory and it's like, we can't do that. Humble ourselves under his mighty hand. So as I, as I was looking at this, at, at this, the conference, I, I, asked, I asked Pastor Erica, what's, gonna, what's it about? He says, Warriors are resilient. I'm like, okay, warriors are resilient. I said, Holy Ghost, give me a word. I just, I need a word. I need something that has substance from heaven that will penetrate the hearts of your people. Amen. Some, just one word can change your life forever. Just one word. Amen. And so in this conference, we, we are decreeing that warriors are resilient. Amen. And so the question I have is, well, what, the, what does that really mean? Warriors are resilient. What, what do I have to do to become a resilient warrior? Amen. And I believe the first thing is this, is that we must become spiritually in tune with the Holy Ghost. We have to have antennas, spiritual antennas that we know his voice. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. And so we have to be spiritually in tune. With the Spirit of God. And when, you come, and when you become spiritually in tune with the Spirit of God, your, your increase in the Spirit decreases your carnality. So you gotta, you, you've got to grow in the Spirit. You have an inner man. People are trying to walk with God with a carnal mindset. And it's not going to happen. You've got to learn his voice. You've got to get into the word. You've got to understand his promises. You've got to know how to come into the courtrooms of God. You have to know how to petition the Lord. And then you also have to know how to meditate on Christ. Amen. Because people are constantly petitioning, 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 but they never sit still to meditate on the word. And when you meditate on the word is when you get revelation of Jesus Christ. That is why you have to get in your closet. You have to have a secret place that you get yourself locked in with God. And you give him your time and you submit to his kingship and his lordship. And you're there and you don't leave. I, I get to this place, Lord, I'm not leaving till you touch me this morning. I'm not getting out of this place till you give me a revelation of who you are. I want to know you, Jesus. I don't want to know these prophets. I don't want to know these teachers. I don't want to know these pastors. I want to know you, Christ. I want to know you. I want to know who you are in my life. I want to real I want to understand what is all this about here? Why am I here? So when you become spiritually in tune with the Holy Ghost, your increase in the spirit decreases your carnality. Think about that for a minute. This statement suggests that focusing more on spiritual development and growth can help you reduce worldly and materialistic behaviors and tendencies. The church has got caught up with the world. Listen, beloved, we're in the world, but we're not of it. We're just passing through. We're pilgrims looking for a city. And when you begin to understand your purpose on the earth, 
and you tap into that, you can then begin to stop living a life of waste. How much time have we wasted? We have not redeemed the time. Prayer is redeeming time. If God said, seek first, then that is a priority. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the rest of this stuff will be added on to us. But we're so worried, you know, man, about paying the bills. We're so worried about doing this or doing that. We don't understand that God is our provider. And when you turn your face to him, he begins to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. There are riches in his glory that God wants you to, to, uh, to experience in your own life as you're walking on the planet. Galatians 5, 16 says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We see then when we become spiritually in tune with the spirit of God, your increase in the spirit decreases your carnality. A carnal mindset is an enemy of God. We have to learn how to tap into the realm of the spirit of God. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's, it's, it's easy to come and to praise him. But can you worship him? Mary said, Mary said this in the word. She says, my, my soul does magnify the Lord. But then she says something profound. She goes, but my spirit rejoices in him. It's, God is calling deep onto the deep. It's time to mature. It's time to grow up. You know, Paul, Paul, when he went to the Corinth church, he couldn't talk to them like men. He says, I can't talk to you like men. You're still carnal. There's divisions, gossip, all this stuff, man. You know what I mean? Once I was a child, I thought like a child, but I put away those childless things now. we got to grow. And the Bible's very clear. But as, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. When you receive Jesus, he put his spirit inside of you, and you became more than a human. You became more than a Realize what he's saying. Listen, this thing is a temple, and this thing carries God. Wherever, wherever I go, I carry him. And so the anointing in me is him. The peace in me is him. The joy in me is him. And so when we realize that the worlds were framed by the word of God, my God, you got to hear what the, what, what the Lord is saying. By faith, I understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now let me ask you something. You ever heard that phrase, oh, he's in his own little world? What are they talking about? He's in his own little world. And you can tell, you can tell atmospheres. You can tell when, when somebody's carrying an anointing that walks in the room. You can tell, like, there's something about that guy. He's anointed by God. How do you know? Because you've been spending time with God. You've been in the closet. You've been understanding that. You know what I mean? That the anointing is everything that we need. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing, you know what I mean, that gives us the power. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves, is our world framed with the word of God? Because if your world is framed with the word of God. What happens? Now you're right in the middle of his word. And Jesus is the word. So when you place yourself right in the middle of his word, he becomes everything that he says he is for you. Now he's Jehovah Rapha. He's the one, your healer. He's your deliverer. He's your refuge. He's your hiding place. And so when you understand those things, you know what I mean? You're going to be running to your cave. You're going to be running to your hiding place. And you're going to be, you're going to be there. And Lord, I'm not leaving until you touch my life. I'm not leaving, God, until you break this thing off my life. I'm not leaving you, God, until you touch my son. I'm not leaving you, God, until you heal my wife. I'm not leaving. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to destroy the yoke of the enemy that's come over my family. Everybody in this room goes to trial, tribulation. But are you resilient to go through it? Amen. Walk in the spirit, you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Remember, when you become spiritually in tune with the Spirit of God, you increase in the Spirit and decrease your carnality. When we mention, when we mention becoming resilient warriors, we're talking about becoming soldiers. When you enlist, you don't belong to yourself no more. Pastor knows that. The minute he signed in that dotted line, he gave up his rights. He don't, he no long, he's no longer a, a citizen of the United States. He belongs to the, to the military now. And so it doesn't matter whether he likes it or not. If he don't submit to it, he's going to get himself in trouble. It's the same thing with us. When you come into the kingdom of God, you give your life to Christ. You don't belong to yourself no more. He purchased you with the, with the, with the blood of the Lamb. So we have to understand these things. We've, we're mentioning becoming resilient warriors. We're talking about becoming a soldier. A soldier that is resilient. Amen. We discipline ourselves to become resilient soldiers in the realm of the spirit. Why? Because we now understand that the battle is in the spiritual realm. And the spirit and spiritual warfare is a warfare of wisdom and knowledge. We need to be sharp in the wisdom and knowledge of the Spirit of God. We must become resilient in our walk with God. Amen? To become resilient, again, you have to increase in the realm of the Spirit. To become resilient, you have to grow in the Spirit. To become resilient, you must be rooted and grounded in Him. Now, resilient, what does that mean? Resilient means this. It means to be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on. Be strong. It means to be tough. You know what I mean? Long, long, I, I realized a long time ago that God's not raising up a bunch of sissies. He's raising up men of God. And it takes a man to serve God. Man, you know what? It's easy to go out there to the, to the drug house. That's easy to go to the liquor store. That's easy. But you know what? If you don't know how to die to yourself, pick up your cross to follow him. Uh uh. Resilient, be strong, tough. To, to, it means uh, very difficult to keep down. Resilient, very difficult to keep down. How many times has the devil tried to kick you down? But you keep, keep getting up. Why? Because of resilience. You're resilient in your spirit. Amen. It means to be quick to bounce back. I heard Pastor Angel say that. All right, I go, he, he must have been looking at my Bible and my notes here. <laughs> but be, to be quick to bounce up. A lot of times when people, Christians, don't know who they are in Christ, and then they go through a little, a little trial, little trial, man. You know what I mean? And they, and, they, and they slip and they fall because they don't know who they are they stay there in the mud, and they, and, they, and they stay backslid. Why? Because they don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God that's in their belly. They don't understand that God stands behind his word to perform it in our lives. They don't understand that if I just stand on his promises, and you know what I mean, a, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets right back up. But the devil, if you don't know the word of God, you lack knowledge and wisdom. The devil uses that lack of wisdom in your life to keep you down. And then he's condemning you. And then it's whispering in your ear, oh, I thought you were a man of God. I thought you were this. I thought you were that. What are you going to do now? Look at you. Come on. I've had encounters like that. I've had the devil whispering in my ear, man. I can sense his breath. Saying, where are you going to do, old man of God? I thought God was going to do this in you. Where are you going to go? And then I had to stand back up and say, you know what I'm saying? I bind you, you foul devil from hell. Get your hands off me. You have no authority over my life. I've overcome you by the blood of the lamb and my word and my testimony. And I've given my life to Jesus Christ. He's my covering. He's my shelter. He's my refuge. And you have to begin to speak with resiliency of who you really, really are in Christ. But if you don't know that, you don't understand that, you're going to lay your life down and he's just going to smash you. Some people think that, that, that Satan got a little love for them. Huh. No, Satan got no love for nobody. He, he, Satan hates all of us. He hates our guts. His purpose is to still kill and destroy us. 
And so we have, to, we have to equip ourselves with the word of God. We have to become resilient warriors. Amen. Rooted, grounded in him, strong, tough, very difficult to keep down. We, we're quick to bounce back up. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9, and 10, it says this. It says, we are troubled on every side. Come on. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. What am I saying? If you fall down, get back up. Repent and keep going forward. You kick in the gates of hell. Don't stop serving the king of kings. Amen. Do not become defensive. Become offensive. Why? Why is it so important to become offensive? Because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the Bible says, but the violent take it by force. What does suffer violence mean? What does it actually mean? The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. This is what it means. That there is a constant opposition and resistance coming against the kingdom of God. Now you need to capture this. The kingdom of God is within you. So that opposition and resistance is coming at the kingdom of God within you. And when you begin to understand that, if you get defensive, you're going to backtrack and he's going to gain all this stuff on you rather than kicking in the gates of hell and causing him to suffer loss. But see, it's a mentality. It's a mindset. It's called the mind of Christ. Knowing who you are in him. And not allowing Satan to buffet you anymore. Not allowing the devil to molest your mindset. Because that's what he comes. That is why. Check this out. When Paul, when, when Paul was speaking to the church, he says, you know what? When we're together, you do good. Look at him, man. Oh, man. We're all like, hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. He says, but when, when I'm absent. You need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And so when you start studying that word, salvation, I'm thinking, well, i gotta work my, I got to work my way to heaven. It's not talking about that. He says, work out your own salvation. That word salvation comes from the Greek word victoria, which means deliverance, preservation. And when you get into the Thayer's Greek lexicon, it means deliverance from the molestation of the enemy. So... Paul's saying, work out your own salvation. He's saying, work out your own deliverance from the molestation of the enemy. Where does the enemy molest us? In our mind. That's why we have to have the mind of Christ. We have to, we have to know who we are in him and recognize our position, our alignment with the kingdom of heaven here on the earth. We have the kingdom of God within us. And if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils among you, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom's not a word, it's in power. And we have, to, we have to understand that this is what makes us resilient. When we understand who we are. So when the enemy does come in like a fat rat and tries to mess our lives, we can get right back up. Put on the armor of God and make a, and stand. The battle's the Lord's, the victory is mine. Devil, you're defeated and every principality and power is under my feet. You have no more power over my life. I've overcome you. Come on. We are more than conquerors, the Bible says. If you retreat and become defensive, you suffer loss. When you become offensive, you take it by force. You take it by force and you cause the enemy to suffer loss. Second Timothy says this, in two, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that can make us strong as saying, I'm a child of God in Christ Jesus. And I have the love and favor of God even though I don't deserve it. He loves me. Come on. Hallelujah. That is the strength. That is the strength that comes by grace. And in verse 2 it says, And the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses... The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. God gave ministry to Timothy, not for him to keep it to himself, but for him to pass it to others. Amen. 
as an essential part of Timothy's ministry as Paul's spiritual son, Timothy was instructed to pour into others what God had committed to him. What has God poured in you? Get, get another brother, man, and pour into them. Amen? Pour into them and pray to God that the seed of the word of God land on good, on good solid ground. You know, there's times when I'll be working with, with men, you know what I mean, and, and then I see them doing the same old, same old. And then they come and go, hey, will you disciple me? I'm like, dude, you've been with me two weeks. If you haven't learned anything, ain't nothing I can teach you. Hello? Come on, y'all looking at me like a bunch of bullfrogs on a rock pile. It says, thou therefore, 2 Timothy 2.3, thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, we must become a soldier that is resilient. This is what this is all about. Amen. We must become a warrior that is resilient. A warrior is a soldier, and a soldier is a warrior. Come on. A resilient soldier is someone who possesses mental strength. You have to have a strong mindset, and that's only going to come through the mind of Christ. And the only way you're going to get the mind of Christ is by getting in his word, studying the word of God and applying. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the, of the ungodly, right? Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But check it. He says, but his delight. His delight. You know where it's at? It's in the law of the Lord. And when you understand what that means, the law of the Lord. People say, well, we're not under the law. That's not what it's saying. The law there is translated instructions and directions. He meditates on the law, on the instructions, on the directions of the Lord. And when we begin to meditate on that, what happens? We become like a tree that's planted by the rivers of living water. Amen. Our, our leaves are not going to wither. Basically saying you're going to be on fire for God. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Amen. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up that standard. And you, you, you become so resilient that you, you recognize the enemy come in and right away, boom, get out of here. Amen. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's given us the anointing and the power to become the sons of God, to represent him here on the earth. And the earth is moaning and groaning for us to manifest. And we can't manifest, man, if we're bringing worldly concerts in the church. You know what I mean? People try to mimic the glory with smog machines in the church. In Colorado, listen to this. In Colorado, churches are, are building breweries in their church to raise up money. Go figure. Carnal mindsets, thinking that that's the spirit. No. And then when you begin to talk about these things, going deeper with the word of God, they think you're, you're teaching heresy. I'm telling you, man, I've had, I have had, I had a guy just tell me the other day, well, I don't believe in that kingdom stuff you preach. I'm like, dude, Jesus preached it, John preached it, the disciples preached it. It's all in the word. It's just a matter of the way you're interpreting it, man. The manifestation of that is healing the sick, kicking out, you know what I mean, casting out devils, raising the dead. Amen. When you go into the hospital and somebody's in a coma, you go lay hands, you should live and not die, and you leave, and that guy is raised from that coma, that's the kingdom right there. Uh, I, I dare to believe that probably 99% of the church has never seen a, a, a human being with a demon on the floor with his tongue whipping out. The first time I seen that, I'm like, wow, what is this? I just want to be a rock and roll star, bro. I didn't, I didn't sign up for this stuff. You know, tongue whipping out, you know what I mean, this going like a bullfrog, you know what I mean, on the, on the floor like a snake doing this, and they toss, and they toss, which is Satan backwards. Dealing with the occult up in the desert, bro. This is for, this stuff is real, man. I have to be. I have to become re resilient to go through what I went through. I realized quickly, Satan hates my guts, and he got nothing. He ain't got nothing for me but to still kill and destroy me. But I thank God that Jesus came. I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. 
an abundant life. God is good. God is good. God is good. So a resilient, a resilient warrior, soldier, is someone who possesses mental strength. He has the mind of Christ. He is strengthened in the inner man. And he has a heart after God. Come on, that's good. He has a heart after God. So I forgot who was up here saying we got to learn, you know what I mean? We got to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord when we're going through, through the fire. David encouraged himself in the Lord. How much more do we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord? You know what I mean? Life is not going to be a, a bowl of cherries like people say. If you serve God, you're going to suffer for his name's sake. That's word, man. That's, that's, you know what I mean? But people just want to get, you know, kumbaya, Lord, kumbaya. They don't want to get in the trenches. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, we're not the F troop here. We're the green berets in the army of God. This is who we are. You've got to start thinking this way. You've got to start looking at you. Look in the mirror and say, oh, man of God, I see Jesus in you. A resilient soldier, this warrior that I'm talking about is somebody who possesses, he possesses emotional strength. Well, what do you mean? He has learned to walk by faith and not by sight. Circumstances and atmospheres do not affect his emotions because his passion for Christ is strong. He's rooted and grounded. So when you walk into a room, you're carrying the weight of glory with you. You walk into the room and you can feel you can feel atmospheres. Well, what do you mean? It's like when you go into somebody's house, you can you can you can tell you can feel the elephant in the room. You can look at somebody like, oh man, this person's tripping. Amen. We have the responsibility to, to change the atmosphere with our praise and our worship. When you spend time in your prison. As a soldier, a resilient soldier, and you're there not for five minutes, not for ten minutes, not for 30 minutes. Try going like three, four, five hours and see what God's going to do in your life. I'm talking about the anointing and the fragrance of heaven on you that you can't help but getting out of there smelling like heaven. And people are going to look at you like, man, where you been, bro? And you know me, nonchalant, I've been. I've been with the king. I've been communion, communion with him. I've been allowing him to change my life. I come to him in humility, you know, and just gratefulness, thanksgiving. God, I thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy, God. When everybody left me, you were still there. When people talked about me, you were still there. When people tried to throw me under the bus, you were still there. When people left, you were still there. His love. People do not understand the depth, the length, the width of his love. They don't grab it. You know how you, know how you can tell? It's when somebody pokes you and throws that spear like what Pastor Eric was saying. We got mad kings in the house. So Pastor Angel says something about me, so I pick up my spear and I throw it right back. Mad king. A mad king. We have to be careful, you guys. We have to be very careful. If you don't like how people are talking about you, don't fall in the trap and start talking about them. Love your enemies. Well, I, I'm trying. Well, you're trying because you ain't dead. A dead man has no rights. So when you die to yourself and you put that cross, now you're falling and you're jumping into the will of God for your own life. And you come to a place where you're saying, God, I will to will your will in me. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. That's why Paul could say, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, it's not me. It's Christ that lives in me. And this life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I will not frustrate that grace, for by grace I'm saved through faith. That not of myself. It is the gift of God. And I've received that gift of love in my heart. 
And now I'm on, I'm on quest to learn him. I want to know him. I had an experience uh, one day in, in Barstow. We went to go do worship in Barstow. And they had a prophet, a, a, a prophet there. I'd never seen him before in my life. I'd never heard of him before. And that day before we went, we went to, to, to do the worship. I was in my, in my house, in the room, with the door locked, on my knees, my hands up in the air saying, God, what do you want from me? I don't know if you've ever been there. Like, what do you want from me, Jesus? You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm sincere in my prayer to the Lord, like asking him. What am I, I'm asking him for direction. I'm asking him for his purpose in me. God, I don't understand. What do, what do you want from me? And I leave. I, then we go to Barstow. So I'm in Barstow. And I, the, the, we do the worship, and then I go sit down. Monica and I go sit down in the, in, the, in, the, in the congregation. And so he has a bunch of youngsters in the front that are all prophets. And he, and he releases them to prophesy to everybody. So, the, and then, so then he gets into the word, and he starts preaching the word. All of a sudden, he stops. He goes, I see a man in his room, on his knees, door locked, hands in the air, saying, God, what do you want from me? And then he says, and I see the address, 15432 Delray Drive. And I'm like, 15432. I'm like, 1332, hello, simple guy, you know what I mean? But he's saying, 15432 Delray Drive. So I'm, I'm listening, and all of a sudden it registers. I'm like, I turn to Mona, I said, Mona, babe, that's our address. And then he just stops, and he just keeps preaching the word. And I'm like, what was that about? It sort of got me mad, you know what I mean? I'm still fleshing. But I, it sort of got me mad. So I told, I told my wife, I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load up the stuff and put it in the trunk, you know what I mean, and stay in here because it was cold that night in Barstow. It was in the winter. I said, just stay here, and I'll come back, and I'll get you, and then we'll, 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 we'll go home. So when I, walked in, when I walked in, I came back in, you know what I mean, loading everything up, and I look, and there was a door, and this, this prophet that prophesied that come, opens the door. And so I go, I go walking up to him like, bro, what's up, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like. What was all that about? And he, go, he looks at me. He goes, come here, bro. And he just, he's like a, like a big, big black guy. He's like, come here, bro. Come here. And he starts hugging me. And he's like, oh, my God. And he pushes me. I can feel the waves of glory. You know what I mean? I'm just like, all right. And then he turns around. And he goes, hey, Monica. He don't even know my wife. Calls her by first name. Then he starts saying, I see 6 59 over your head. That's her birth date. Then he turns around and says, I hear the word Stevon, which is my son-in-law. So I, told, I told one of the brothers, go get Stevy. So Stevy comes. I go, give him, your, give him the word, whatever he got. So he starts telling Stevon, you need to stay close to this guy. Don't leave him. Stay close to him. And then he goes, I see over your head simple elegance. That's the name of my son And he starts saying, I hear the word Isaiah. That's my son. He says, he's going to go through some stuff, but he's going to come. Don't worry about him. God has him. Starts giving me all these prophetic words, right? So the next night, we have a prophet coming to our church, Prophet Rob Sanchez. So I, I tell the brother, I say, hey, you know what? I want to invite you. Come to our church. I got another prophet. You know what I mean? Come hang out with us. You know, the brother shows up to the church in Asperia. So we're there. And then he goes up to Prophet Rob, starts reading Prophet Rob's mail. Starts telling him all this stuff. Then he goes to my, my son-in-law, Richard. He goes, I see a three behind your name. I never knew that he was Richard Becerra III. Doing all these things, right? So then meetings, we, we get through the meeting. Now we're going to go eat. Not tacos. We're going to Applebee's. <laughs> and so when, when he, when we leave, my, my daughter and my son-in-law go right. I go left because on the right, there's an Applebee's in Apple Valley. To the left, there's an Applebee's in Victorville. So I turn left. They go right. My, my, my daughter, Aelia, calls me. And she goes, Dad, she goes, you went the wrong way. I go, well, which way you go? She goes, we're in Apple Valley. I go, well, you know what? Prophet Rob went that way. You know what I mean? Entertain Prophet Rob. Take care of him. I go, this other prophet went this way. I'll take care of this prophet. So we go. We're, so we're in Applebee's. So I'm sitting on the table. I got my, I got my phone in my pocket. All of a sudden, I can feel it buzzing. And, I, and the prophet's sitting like right here across the table. And I, and I look at this and it says, are you okay? And I look at him like, yeah, <laughs> I'm okay. And he goes, bro, he goes, I see rays of light over you. I see the word ray. That's my middle name. Then he says, 
10, 20, 54, that's my birth date. And finally I just said, you know what, stop. Stop it. I go, how long have you been doing this? And he looked at me, he goes, ever since I got a revelation of Jesus. Let that soak. Why do you think Christ said, learn of me? We're trying to learn all this other stuff. He said, learn of me. Come on, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Who's his righteousness? It's Christ. Learn of me. My yoke is my, my yoke is my burden is light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Learn of me. There's something in that instruction in the word of God that we need to hang to. But it's only going to come if we have our first priority in order, which is seeking God first. See, we want to go seek these other things first. First things first, man. Get up, seek his face. Well, you don't understand, Pastor Tommy, I work and I, I got to get up at 6. Well, then get up at 3 in the morning. Get up. You can't tell me something that I have not encountered and make an excuse to me. I work the arena. I've worked with dope beans at, at a cement plant, you know what I mean, blowing marijuana smoke in my face. I've done that. I've worked with women, you know what I mean, at a school district, you know what I mean, having affairs with the janitors. I've worked in that junk. I've worked with all, around all the cussing and everything. But you know what? God puts us in those situations to become the light to the world. I'm telling you. And so we have to understand these things. But the only way is to become resilient in Jesus. Come on. Amen. A resilient soldier, and I'm almost done here, is someone who possesses physical strength. He takes care of the temple. Oh. I can only eat so many tacos and i got to stop. I can only eat so much chile, i got to stop. Why? Because I feel it affecting the temple of God. How, what good am I going to be to anybody being sick? I'm not going to be no good to nobody, not even my wife or my children. Six feet under. Why? Because I didn't take care of my body. Oh, I'm just saying. A resilient soldier is someone who possesses physical strength. He takes care of his temple because he knows that he is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And he is resilient to overcome challenges. He's, he's, he's resilient to overcome adversity and trauma while maintaining a sense of purpose. And readiness. Resilient soldier, resilient warriors are able to adapt to difficult situations. There are going to be times when you're going through fire and you've got to adapt to it. The devil's a liar, you guys. Satan is a liar. And just as much as we're trying to seek the face of God, there are people seeking the face of the enemy. It's all in the entertainment. It's all in the government. It's all, you know, man. But this is the world government. We're in this world, but we're not of that. We, become, we are, belong to a higher government, the government of the kingdom of heaven. And now, therefore, we understand as re, being resilient that we're ambassadors. And we understand the 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 the, the Duty of an ambassador is to only speak what the king speaks. Hear this. There's a nugget right here. I only speak what the, what the king says, and when I speak his word, the angels of the Lord hearken unto the voice of his word coming out of me as an oracle of God. Then he stands behind his own word to perform it in our lives, to fulfill and accomplish his will and his purposes there on the earth. church. It's his. And so for the five-fold ministry, the most dangerous thing for five-fold ministries, Pastor Eric, is when they start preaching their own vision. What do you mean? We need a heavenly vision. What is, what is heaven saying right now concerning earth? What is it that the Father is saying right now concerning you and I and what we're supposed to do with our responsibilities? 
And so you got churches with their own programs, their own stuff like this, you know what? And it's like, no, man, what is the heavenly vision? If I'm part of the fivefold ministry, it's the responsibility to equip the saints. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Not jack them, not tear them down, but give them the nuggets they need to go through this, this life here victoriously and do the will of God in their own lives. I'm telling you what, there's no, there's no other thing that better to do than to do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. A resilient warrior is able to recover from setbacks and continue to perform their duties effectively. How many have had setbacks? Beloved, listen, you, don't, you have no clue what I've gone through. You don't know. We had 300 people, Pastor Angel. And the Satanists up there came at me and Monica. Started calling the secretary and telling, telling the secretary, you better tell your pastors to move. We're going to kill them. And so the secretary's asking, well, who are you guys? Oh, we're the covens up here, the warlocks, the ones that run the region up here. I'm like, what? These people started spray, spraying death in the back of the church doors, planting tarot cards in the bathrooms. Physically, they came around my house and started stalking my home, started trying to, trying to taunt me. They would, they would honk their horn. I, I live like, you know, on a, on a corner. They would honk the horn from this part of the beep, 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 stop, and then go turn around, beep, 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 beep. So I'm sitting in the back one day in my house, and I'm like, who's honking their horn? And I'm right in the middle of a church split. People are leaving. And I go out, and it was dark, it was dark already, and so I'm looking, I see the car, and I see them turning around, and they're honking. And now I'm, I'm in a bad place. I, I was hurt. I was crushed. I got bitter of soul. I had a root of bitterness in me, and I knew it. You know. You know what I mean? You guys know when something in you is not right. And I had a root of bitterness, bro. I was like, I'm still behind the pulpit, man, in a bad place. And when I saw that car, I called my son-in-law, Anthony. I said, hey, Ant, come over here. I, I need a ride. I don't know what I was doing. But I was, I was tripping. I was like, man, this has got to stop. I'm, I'm just like, I'm ready to flesh out. I'm just ready to get a gun or something, you know what I mean? So Anthony gets me in the car. He goes, where do you want to go? I didn't know where I was going. And I'm like, I'm here, I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I go, go straight. And then the Holy Spirit says, turn right. Turn right, bro. Turn left. Turn right. But we end up in a neighborhood, and I see the car that was taunting me in the driveway. And I knew that the people that lived there were into witchcraft. And I'm, so I'm tripping, and I'm like mad. man. I was like, so I opened the car door. I started to get out, and the Holy Ghost says to me, what are you doing? I go, I'm going to go handle it, Father. And he goes, no, 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 mijo. No. He goes, I showed you so you could intercede and use the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose. Don't, don't, not flesh and blood, bro. Come on. It was hard. We ended up losing everybody, 300 people. Got $18,000 in the hole for the stupid building that we were in. I think about it, it gets me mad because I'm like, you know, say you foul devil. And so I'm $18,000 in the hole in three months because the ties stop. I don't have a second job. This is what I do. I'm employed by heaven. And when that happened, man, I'm like, I was in a wilderness. And I had to become resilient. I had to keep getting back up. And I had to fight the good fight of faith and believe God. And I was, but, but you know what? It was so hard. I was bitter. And I knew I was bitter. And so I got sick. People were just leaving and leaving and leaving. And the next thing I know, man, these warlocks are coming into the church. These witches are coming into the church. And they're taunting me. So one day, I just, one of the youth came to me and says, you know what, Pastor, tell me. There's a dude here, he's a, he's a warlock, and he said he came to destroy the youth, and he's going to destroy you and Monica. I'm like, all right, 
so I'm preaching. I'm, I'm still doing, doing, trying to do what I'm called to do. And I said, um, I gave an altar call. So the homeboy come up to the altar. And I'm in, I'm in a bad place. I've got a root of bitterness in me, and I know I've got a root of bitterness. I don't know what to, if I'm coming or going. I know one thing. I'm not, I'm not leaving the Lord. I'm not going to leave him. And so the guy comes up to the altar. So I get in his ear. I go, what are you here for? He goes, oh, I just want to serve the Lord. I go, all right. I go, raise up your hands real high. So I get the oil, and I put it in my hands. I says, close your eyes, bro. Lift your hands real high. And I got the oil in my hands, and I put it in a fist, and I hit him as hard as I could in the stomach. I go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that Satanist goes flying back, and I go down there. And I get down on my knee, and I get in his ear, and I says, look, homie. I go, know who you are. I go, don't get it twisted. I love God, but I'm not in a good place. You keep messing with me. If God don't take care of you, I will. Flesh, total flesh. So then I had another incident happen. I'm in the, I'm in the office, like in the back room over here. And I can hear somebody go, F God, F you, F the church. And I can hear these, the, the, whoever was dealing with this, this girl trying to cast this demon out of her. And so I'm in the back room. I'm like, God, Jesus, come on, Lord. Give them the power to drive that thing out. Lord, I, I'm, I'm done. I can't do this no more, Father. Help me. I go, if I go out there, I'm going to trip. They couldn't do it, man. I got, I got, I was, I was bitter. I go out there, I get, again, I get the oil. She's got her tongue whipping out like this on the floor, like a snake, like this. And I get the oil, and I started jamming it in her mouth. She goes, you devils from hell, the fire God burn you out. She starts screaming like, ah, I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. And I said, I just, so I left that, that, that there. So now, going a little bit forward, now everybody's left. The whole church. 312 people, gone. $18,000 in the home. I'm crying every single night. Monica would come to me, you, you okay, babe? And I go, yeah, and just start weeping, just weeping and weeping, man. I was broken. And I remember one day she was going to go do her nails, you know, a woman thing. And so... In the house that I lived at, in that time, the, 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 the street was a fast street. The high school was right across the way. So a lot of activity at my house. So every time I would, I would do, kick back, I'd go in my patio in the back. For whatever reason, I'm in the front, sitting in a launch chair, the garage door open. Monica backs out. She takes off to go do her nails. And I just uncontrollably just start weeping and crying. And then I, I snapped. I'm like, well, what am I doing out here? I'm in the front yard. I'd never do that. Never. That's out of my character. So I, get, I go in the garage. I put the garage door down. And in the garage, I had a little room, just a little small, like four by eight maybe, where I would, I would pray, you know, write music or whatever. So as I'm walking, I close the garage door, and I'm walking to the little room. Satan's right here, man. And I could feel his breath. I'm not exaggerating. It's like he's breathing on me like this, like a dragon. He goes, what are you going to do, old man of God? I thought, I thought you were a revivalist. I thought, I thought you were the man of God of the hour. Da, 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 da. Just taunting me. He goes, why don't you curse God and die? And I'm like, Satan, you foul devil. I bind you. Get your face out of me. Get out of here. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I'm weeping. I get into the room and I close the door. Here I am again in a, in a situation. I'm knocked down. And I'm crying and I'm weeping. I said, God, what do you want from me? Then I hear the Holy Spirit. He says, son, you think that the Satanists did this to you? You think the people did this to you? He goes, I'm God. I am the potter and you are the clay. He says, and you, you got too much stinking pride. And I had to put you back on my potter's wheel and reshape you and reform you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And all of a sudden, man, I, I'm conversing with him. And then I catch a vision of my life. I see me in the vision. And I see those two incidents with the warlock and the witch, you know, doing, doing what I was doing. And the Lord says, I have never given you my anointing to abuse my creation like this. He goes, you have too much pride, son, and I had to put you back on the potter's wheel. You're thinking it's the witch and the warlocks and all these other people. He goes, I am God, and it's my anointing. 
and you're not stewarding it right. You need to, you, you're not, and I'm like, Lord, and when I'm seeing this, I'm like, I start repenting. I said, God, forgive me. Give me another chance. So I'm going through this whole thing. Next thing that happens is the Lakeland Revival break, breaks out when it was all good. So my daughter Covina comes to me. She says, Dad, another revival broke out because I had gone to Pensacola. Billy and I had gone to Pensacola, Florida to that revival. Changed our lives. And so I told Colby, my daughter, I said, Mija, I go, I just don't want to go to another meeting. I'm done. I don't want to just go to another service. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need God to heal my heart. I need God to, to straighten my life out. And while she's telling me this, she, she gets on there and then she puts it on. And they were at a baseball field at that time. So I'm looking at this thing. And all of a sudden, there's a, a, a little boy in a wheelchair come in the baseball field, like, you know, in the, in the infield. And he gets up. I don't know why. The camera was just pointed to him. And he gets up. You know how when somebody's been paralyzed all their life, no muscles, no nothing? And this little boy's, like, walking all, like, crazy. But he's got up the, the wheelchair and walked up to the platform. And so the man of God says, hey, how long have you been crippled and all this stuff? And he goes, from, from birth. Been crippled. God Healed him. The anointing came through the screen, and I just started crying. Well, I'm watching this. My friend that was there was helping Todd Bentley. His name is Jeff Garvin. And Jeff, so Todd turns to Jeff and says, Jeff, who do we got next? And so I see Jeff. Jeff was supposed to come to our church, but I couldn't get a hold of him. He was going to come and minister. Well, he was over there in Lakeland. So I called Canada where he lives, and I said, and I talked to his daughter, Crystal. I said, Crystal, where's your daddy at? She goes, he's in, he's in in, in Florida, I'm like, I need his, I need his, the, his, his landline the, where, where I can get a hold of him. So I called him right there. While I'm on the phone, he picks up and I go, I go, hey Jeff, this is Tommy. I go, what's up going? He goes, dude, you need to get over here. There's an open heaven. You need to get over here. I go, I go, Jeff, I don't want to go over there. It's just another meeting, bro. I go, there has to be substance from heaven there. While I'm talking to him, Covina's making airline, getting airline tickets. I didn't even know. I get on the plane the next morning. Me and Monica take off, 6 o'clock in the morning, fly to, fly, to, fly to Florida. So when I get there, you know, because Jeff is part of the team, you know, he's taking us to the back. You know, we're not waiting. There was lines for blocks to get into the building. So he takes us into the green room, and, you know, I'm sitting there. So then we get up, and he goes, I'm like, come on, sit up on the platform up here with me, Tommy. I'm like, I go, dude, no. I go, you know what, I'll sit up there. I go, I go Jeff, you don't understand. He didn't know where I was at. I go, I just need to touch. I just need to touch the hem of his garment. I need healing, man. He goes, no, sit right here. So he made us sit in the front. Then I, we go to the room. I'm laying down in bed, fall asleep in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden I wake up and I'm choking on my vomit. And I couldn't breathe. I thought I was dying. I get up, I make it to the bathroom, and I'm spitting this stuff up from right here. It came up like this, vile, bitter, bitter, bitter. Just, and I'm spitting this stuff out. And I'm like trying to get my composure. My wife is sound asleep. She never, she, she never saw it. And then I go back to bed. I lay down. When I wake up in the morning, the Lord says, okay, son. He goes, I just delivered you from the root of bitterness. From now on, guard your heart. Don't allow the offenses to come at you again. Just guard yourself. So I've been guarding my heart ever since. And God has been faithful and he's been just, you know what I mean, and helped me. Let me close this up. A resilient soldier often demonstrate characteristics such as per perseverance, optimism, flexibility, and the ability to seek support when needed. A soldier is faithful. He's committed and he's loyal to God and to his church. A warrior understands that building resi resilience is an important aspect of spiritual military training and resilience can help them navigate the demands and stresses of their roles in, the, in a healthy and effective manner. To, be, to build resilience as a, as a Christian soldier or warrior, you have to focus Focus on deepening your relationship with God through prayer, meditation, study, and worship. Prayer and, and meditation are important. 
Because prayer is petitioning before God in his courts. And meditation is where revelation is received. Without meditation, there's no revelation. You have to meditate on the word of God. I'm not talking about that new age stuff, emptying your mind and allowing demons to come in. I'm talking about meditating on, on the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalms 1-2 one, one, says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. This is how we develop the mind of Christ. We meditate on his word day and night. We meditate on his promises day and night. We obey his law, meaning his instructions and directions day and night. That's 24-7. We must maintain our discipline with the mind of Christ. We have to surround ourselves with, like-minded, with a like-minded community right here. Amen? And get our priorities in order. God has to be number one, first priority in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen? So in closing, embrace challenges as opportunities for growth. Amen? Draw strength from scripture. Seek guidance from mentors, from pastors, from leaders. Amen? Amen? Practice, hear this, practice forgiveness and cultivate gratitude. Be grateful for what God has done. Stay connected in your church and trust in God's plan for you. Why? Because with consistency, faith, and perseverance, faithfulness, commitment, and loyalty, you can face life's challenges. Amen? With an unwavering faith and, a, and, as, and courage as, as a soldier, a resilient warrior. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. I guess we're just going to open the altar if you guys want prayer. Okay. Amen. Maybe you can get Josh on the, on the keyboards. If you guys want prayer, you know what I mean, just... Come up to the altar. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you need to uh, do business with Jesus right now, you know what I mean? If there's something that was said that maybe just like, you know, you know, man. You know what's inside of you. You, you understand what I'm saying? The, the thing is that Jesus wants us to be honest with him. Be honest. One of the biggest, biggest things that happens in Christianity, especially with people that they start getting platforms and everything, if they don't deal with the issues of their heart, that issue will be the very thing that's going to cause the downfall in their life. If you, if you wrestle with lust and you never deal with lust, possibility you're going to fall up in an adulterous affair or going after a hooker. Come on. Am I talking to the church? There are issues that we have in our, in our, in our lives that we don't deal with. Deal with the stuff so that God God can use you with purity. Whatever whatever you're struggling with, this right here, the altar, is a place of exchange. It's a trading floor with heaven and earth. And you come, you come to the altar and you bring your body as a living sacrifice. And as you come to the altar... You come and you lay everything down. That's what I did in 79. I got on my knees. I says, if you're so for real, like, they, 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 I thought Christians were crazy, bro. You know what I had? I had that, that vision that they rode bicycles with a tie. That's not the church. That's Mormons. <laughs> but that's what I thought, man. Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't, no, that's, no, that's dumb, man. I don't want to do that. I didn't realize. No, 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 no. The devil lying to me. But when, you, when I came and I traded my life for his life, is when transformation came. Conversion came. And so that's when he put his spirit inside of me and began to open my eyes up. Where now I can read the word of God and the words just started popping out the pages. I started realizing, wow, this, this word is alive. It's not dead. Before, before you have the spirit of God, all you're doing is reading the letter. The letter kills. It's the spirit that gives life. And the thing that we have to understand, Jesus says, the words that I speak are spirit, and they are life. So as Christians, we got to recognize death and life is in the power of this tongue. What are we speaking over situations? Because if we're created after his image and likeness, that means that the words that we speak are spirit, and they are life. 
And so if I'm over here downing somebody with my mouth, my tongue, I just give life to, to and birth to demons to be activated in, in my atmosphere. God, teach me. I want to know you. I want to I want to be a good steward of what you're giving me, God. I know you. How am I how am I gonna walk with you? How am I gonna know your voice? How am I how am I how am I gonna commune? That you know what this all this is all being sold out for Jesus. A soldier, a resilient soldier is sold out. At any cost, he's sold out. That when pastor says, hey, I need some help, what do you need, pastor? What do you guys need? And you become armor bearers. You don't let nobody touch the man of God. You become armor bearers. You surround this brother when he's, if he's going through fire, going through trial. And you begin to pick up your weapons of intercession. You begin to pray. Take the keys of the kingdom. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. You know what he was talking about? He was talking about the steadfastness and firmness that, that Peter had when he says, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the, 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 the living God. You're the one. He says, upon this rock, this steadfastness, this firmness, I'm going to build my church. And check it. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. That's why, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's in down imaginations. Come on. Let's be real. How many times you get imagination? You're just entertaining it. You just, you just, you just ponder on the, and the devil's right here. Man, Satan will try to bring stuff from my past. I have to put my hand out, like speak to the hand, you foul devil. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I've overcome you through the blood of the Lamb, and I bind you. I take the authority that Jesus has given me. You have no authority over my life no more. And every principality, every power, every ruling spirit of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high places is under our feet. Do you believe it? Do you understand that? Do you realize that? This is who you are. You guys are all powerhouses, man, for the kingdom. Every one of us. And this is what blows my mind that the scripture says the earth is moaning and groaning for the sons of God to manifest. So whatever it is that you want to make business, come. The altar is open. I, I would just encourage you, get on your knees. Get on your face for a few minutes and just say, Lord, help me deal with this thing. Help me deal with the guy that just talked about me, God. Help me deal with the guy over here that called me a false teacher. Help me deal with this father. I bless him. And I pray that you enlighten the eyes of his understanding, that he would know the hope of his, of his own calling. Jesus, I need you in my life. God, I want you in my life. Come on. How many are willing to do this, man? I challenge you guys. Because this takes humility. This takes walking in humble, you know, being humble and asking God, Lord, Use my life, Jesus. Use me. Whatever is in me, Lord, take it out of me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I stand on your word. I stand on your promises. That if I confess my sins, you're faithful and you're just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Purify my mind, my heart, my soul, my body. God, put the fire of the Holy Ghost on the inside of me, God, that I burn with passion for more of you. Less of me, more of you. Help me to be spiritually minded, God. Help me and teach me how to build my inner man up. How do I build my inner man, my spirit man, so that now I'm being led by the Spirit of God. My spirit's in control now, not my mind, my will, and my emotions. Bring my body into submission to my soul. My soul into submission to my spirit. My spirit into submission to the Holy Ghost. Ha. Huh. I want to see your fire, God. I want to see the fire in your eyes, God. Lord, as I tap into the realm of your glory, Jesus. Father, as we come before your presence, Jesus. My God, change us from glory to glory. To glory to glory, God. Father, manifest yourself through us, God. 
Father, we present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you. Jesus, help me, God. Help me to be committed. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be loyal to you and your word and to your kingdom. I belong to you, Jesus. This is where I want to be, God. I want to dwell in your presence, Father. I want to abide with you, Jesus. Under your wings, God, God. Give us the strength that we need to endure to go far further and help us to become soul winners, God. To win souls, God. Help us to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. If you can speak in tongues, you can pray in tongues. Begin to pray in tongues. Because when you pray in that language, in that heavenly language, it's a direct line to heaven. It's a, it's a, it's you're connected straight, spirit to spirit, with your heavenly language. Ask God to show you. Ask God, Lord, reveal to me the realms of your glory, God. Reveal to me the riches of your glory. Reveal it all to me, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray for my brothers here at the altar. God, I pray the anointing, Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would anoint. Anoint them, God, with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Father, that you would enlighten the eyes, God, of their understanding, Jesus. Lord God Almighty, Father God. Lord Jesus, I just pray the fire of God. Impart the fire of the Holy Ghost in my brothers, God. Lord, I pray, Father, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge. Lord God, just to come upon them, God. Jesus, I pray that you start giving us visions and dreams, God. Mighty God, fill us, Jesus. Fill us, fill our cups, God. Father, that we may become a drink offering, Lord God, and pour, pour it out. And then we come back and we get refilled up, Lord God. Jesus, wisdom, we need wisdom, God need the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge in the face of Jesus, God. I just impart, Lord God. I just impart these things on my brothers, God. Lord God, you're a mighty God. You're a holy God. Jesus, make our crooked path straight, Father. Lord God, fill us, Lord God. Lord God Almighty, create in us a clean heart. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, God. Lord God, help us, Lord God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Father, I decree as a king, revival fire in this church, God. Father, that you would rend the heavens over this place, God. And Father, that you would begin, Lord God, to just let the river of God flow out of this church into the neighborhood, God. Father, as we release the anointing, God, Father, Lord, as we speak your word, we decree your word. Lord God, that the angels are hearkening right now, God, to the voice of your word. And they're waiting for the assignment. Lord, we loose the angels now. Ministering angels. Ministering angels. The same way, Jesus, that they came to you in the wilderness and ministered to you, Jesus. Come. Come, Lord God. Come in our lives, God. Minister to us, God. Holy Ghost fire. Shuri ala la la mosete keya. Ori ala la 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 mosete keya lo romosete. Shuri ala la 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 mosoto. Father, I break, Lord God, the curses of witchcraft that have been spoken against this church. God, we bind the witches up now. We bind up the sorcerers, the voodoo doctors, God. We break up, Lord God, all spirits, all the occult activities that have been trying to come against this body. Now, break it off. Break it. Release angels, Lord God. Show. Ramatai kayo lo romosete. Ori alalala ramosete ramasata da ramosete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah.
understand. The enemy is going to come and start speaking to you. You didn't get anything. You're still the same way. And as Pastor said, in Jesus' name, rebuke those things that will come. I know because that's happened to me. You, you're at an exciting service. Everything, there was a blow up. On. God came down and met us. And then you go to home and all of a sudden, the enemy knows how to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to give us life, life more abundantly. Praise God. I just want to say this. Thank you again, Pastor Angel. Thank you. I love you. And all my friends, but we're going to do one thing which we do for the men of a higher standard. We, we like to take a picture. So if we all the men come up, you know, come on. You guys been here. You know the routine, you know. Line up. Pastor Tommy, Billy Joe.